If the ratio of men to women is 3 to 2 and there are 12 women, how many men are there? Is the answer A, B, C, D, or E? So now's your chance if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so in this case here, for a ratio question like this, one strategy is to take this information, this 3 to 2, and rewrite it as a fraction. So I'm going to write it as 3 over 2. Now, this tells me that there are three men for every two women. So we know, we don't know how many men there are, right? Because it tells us that there are 12 women. So to, I'm just going to put a letter M here to represent men in the top of the fraction. And since we know that there are 12 women, I'm going to put a 12 down here. All right, and so now the name of the game is going to be to solve this equation for m. And when I say solve the equation for m, all I mean is we want to get this m by itself. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by 12 on both sides of my equation here. And the 12s will cancel out on the right-hand side. So in your calculator, you could simply do 12 times 3 and divide by 2, which gives me 18. So A is the correct answer here, and if you'd like to, you can pause the video and look at the written solution, and whenever you're ready, we'll move on. If the volume of this rectangular prism is 2,340 cubic meters, what is the height? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? And just to save you some time, I gave you the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism right here. It's volume equals length times width times height. But just know that on your test, they'll give you a formula sheet and you'll want to look this up on your formula sheet. I'm just giving this to you just for the sake of time since we're just practicing. So now's your chance if you'd like to to pause the video, try to work this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry because we're just going to go over the answer. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is since we're told the volume is 2,340, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here into the formula and I'm going to take this number and I'm going to substitute it into the formula in place of V. So that was my first move here. Okay, now for putting the length and the width in, uh, you might have been confused. Well, do I put 13 in for length or is 13 the width? It doesn't really matter, honestly, that much. If you put 13 times 6 or 6 times 13, it's going to be the same answer either way. Uh, so anyway, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 13 times 6 here, which gives me 78. So when I rewrite, I'll have 78 times H. Now, if I have 78 times H and I want to get H by itself, what I have to do is divide. All right, so I'm going to divide by 78, but whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other. So I'm going to take this big number and I'm going to divide by 78, and I get 30 as my answer. So let me show you the written solution. You can pause the video, take all the time you need if you'd like to. If not, then we'll go right on to the next question. What is the volume of a cone with a radius of 9 meters and a height of 12 meters? And again, I provided you with the formula here. This is volume equals 1 third pi r squared h. And I've done this just for the sake of time here, but just know that on the test, you'll obviously have to look this up on the formula sheet. All right, so let me give you a chance to pause the video, try this question out. And if you get stuck, don't worry about it because we're just gonna go over the answer. Okay, so let me first make a, a, a note here about pi. So this is really a good practice for every question. Sometimes it helps to just glance at the answer choices before you even do the calculation. And what I want you to see here is that in each of the answer choices here, they just left pi in the answer choice. All right, so when we do our calculation, we're just going to leave pi. We're not going to include pi in the calculation. All right, uh, on the test, sometimes they'll just leave pi right here. Sometimes they will make you actually multiply by 3.14. All right, it just depends on uh, what question you get. I've seen it on practice tests, I've seen it both ways. I've seen it where they just leave pi and I've seen it where they make you multiply by pi. So don't be thrown off by that. A lot of students get uh, kind of stressed out about that. Um, but really, you just want to kind of check and if they leave pi in the answer choices, you don't include it in your calculation. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the radius here, it says radius of nine. So I'm just gonna plug nine in for r, but since it's r squared, we do nine times nine. So as I rewrite this here, I've got volume equals one third pi 81 times 12. Okay, and so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna do one third times 81 times 12, and we're not gonna include pi in the calculation. All right, so if you do that, we would get 324 pi and we just leave the pi 
right like it is because that's how they have it in the answer choices here all right so again they may leave pi in the answer choices or they might make you multiply by pi so if you don't see pi left in the answer choices all you'd have to do is do this calculation 324 and you'd have to multiply it by 3.14 all right, so pi is a number, it's approximately equal to 3.14. This next question is the hardest question in the video, in my opinion. You can let me know down below if you think that there was a harder question or if you think this was the hardest. I'll let you try it now. So we have the fraction 4 over 5 plus 6 over 7. So this is your next question here. This is a little tricky, and you can pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so if you haven't studied adding fractions yet, then hopefully this will give you a, a good overview of how to do the skill. And basically, the key to adding fractions is you want to get a common denominator. Now, the denominator is just a fancy word for the number in the bottom of the fraction. So in the first fraction here, 4 over 5, 5 is the denominator. And in the second fraction here, 6 over 7, 7 is the denominator. And the denominators have to match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 5 and I'm going to multiply it by 7. And I also am going to have to multiply this 4 by 7. And if I come over here to this fraction, I'm going to take this 7 down here and multiply it by 5. But I also have to multiply the top number here by 5. Okay. And so as we can see now, the denominators are going to match. So let me rewrite this. So 4 times 7 is 28. And the bottom number is 35. Okay. Now this fraction, my second fraction right here, 6 times 5 is 30. And 7 times 5 is 35. Okay. And if you're having trouble following this, I would recommend reviewing basic skills with fractions. And I'll try to remember to put a link down below to that video that I have on my channel that will teach you how to do this. Uh, if I forget to put that link, just please remind me in the comments down below. Uh, sometimes I do forget to do that. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up these numbers. So 28 plus 30 is 58. But here's the trick. I don't want to add the bottom numbers. So I don't want to do 35 plus 35. I just leave the 35 right here. All right. So it's 58 over 35. So A is going to be one of my answers here. But I want to double check uh, and see because E says more than one of the above are correct. Basically, there are three types of fractions you have to know on your test. And whenever you see a fraction where the top number is bigger than the bottom number, this is what we call an improper fraction. Now, if it was the other way around, if the bigger number was smaller than the bottom number, that would just be called a proper fraction. And the other type of fraction we need to know is a mixed number. And a mixed number is going to have this whole number out front, and then it's going to have a fraction right here. Basically, the mixed number form of this is going to have the same denominator. So if I look at D, I know that D can't be correct, all right? D, this number 1... Uh, 27 over 40 is not equal to 58 over 35 because this denominator is a 40 in the fraction. So I would take D out right here. Um, and then if I look at one right, if I look at B, look at the fraction here. See how this fraction has a 35 in the denominator, just like my improper fraction right here? Well, B could be correct. So the way that I want to prove that is I just want to take this 35 and I want to do 35 times 1, which is just 35, plus 23. And that gives me 58 right here. Like I said, I know I threw a lot at you right now, so if you're confused, don't worry. Um, you know, just for the sake of time, you know, I'm throwing a lot at you. But here's the written solution on the screen. You can take all the time you need to read the solution. This might help to clear this up if you have trouble with this. And if not, I would recommend you uh, check out that video I have on fractions. I break this down a lot slower.